Greetings and blessings, 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 blessings. This is Don Strudman live from Kessa Kern Heights, Brooklyn, New York. And uh, we're about an hour away before we start to get deeper into the meditations of Pesach, Passover. It happens to be the 14th of Nisan. Actually, the Corbin Pesach, the Paschal sacrifice, which will be renewed speedily in our days through the agency of Mashiach Tzitkein, our righteous Messiah. Make no doubt about it, blessed souls. We will see the Paschal sacrifice again. And of course, we'll be guided by Moshe Ben and Moses, the mighty Levite prophet, and his brother Aaron Cohen, the high priest, Aaron. So, how do we prepare for Pesach, blessed souls? Well, you know, I, I got my bottle of wine. We'll be drinking four cups of wine tonight and tomorrow for those of us living outside the land of Israel. Eretz Yisrael, Eretz Yisrael, Zavaz Chavat, Arava Davash, the land flowing with milk and, milk and honey, which is alluding to from the Panimia to Torah, the inner dimensions flowing with meditations of different levels of delight into Elokut, into divinity. So we've got our munchy and crunchy matzah from Eretz Yisrael, from the land of Israel. But we have to go back to our beginnings, blessed souls, by remembering the foundations of the Torah, which the Rambam, whose birthday we're celebrating today, Rabbi Moshe ben Maimon, writes in the first halacha that the Yisod HaYisodot V'Ama the Chochmot Leda Shiesham Motsai Rishon V'Hu Mamsai Kola Nimsa V'Chol Nimsaim Mishamayim V'Arts Nima Shabanehim Lo Nimsu Ela Me'amitat HaMatzov Yimatzov that the foundation of all foundation the pillar of wisdom is to know that there is a primary being who brought into being all existence all the beings of heaven and earth and what is between them came into existence only from the truth of his being. Now, if we look at the first four words in Hebrew, blessed souls, you saw that you saw the Amad the Chokmot, the foundation of all foundations and pillar of all wisdom. The first letter of each word, you saw the foundation, how you saw that the foundations that starts off with a yud and a hey, and the Amad and the pillar, a Chokmot of wisdoms, and the Vav and the hey. So we see the divine name alluded to by the by Rambam in his Sefer Yara Chazaka Mishnah Torah and that is one of the principal teachings which permeates and we try to internalize the whole night of the Pesach Seder the recounting of the celebration of our of our being enshackled from the nation of Egypt also combining that too with the teaching, blessed souls, from Baba Batra, regarding Avram Avino, Avram Ivri, Avram the Hebrew, this special Hebrew, it's because of him and his son Yitzhak, Isaac, and his grandson Yaakov, Yisrael, Jacob, Israel, that eventually we would be led out by one of their descendants, Moshe Rabbeinu, Moses, our teacher. And it's written about Avraham that he had a precious stone suspended from his neck, and any sick person that came to him would be immediately healed. What type of healing are we talking about, blessed souls? A precious stone on his neck. It sounds like New Age healing. Well, the truth is, blessed souls, the age of Torah is the New Age. The old age is the age of idolatry, which unfortunately some people, like people like to cling on to the golden oldies in, in, in music, in their love of music, they still want to cling to the old ways of idolatry, going back to the generation of Enosh, and they were not stupid people, just as the Egyptians were not stupid people. They're, in fact, an extremely intelligent uh, gener generation. In fact, Paro himself knew 69 languages. That's, I haven't heard of any recent world leader who knows 69 languages, but we know of Israel from our Torah of Israel, that Paro himself knew 69 languages. The only language he wasn't well-versed in was Hebrew, Lashon Kodesh, And unfortunately, he wasn't well-versed in the ways of the Most High as it's rooted in the divine name, the Yud and the He and the Vav and the He. So Avram Avinu, what was this whole idea that he would bring about healings by those who would come to him and meet with him and talk and look at this precious stone suspended from his neck, that Avram Avinu was engaged in the, in the divine service of constantly eliciting Moichen Bamidos, a divine mindset to rectify his emotional capacities. And this translated into a stone on the physical realm, manifesting in the physical realm, and a stone that was, that was suspended from his neck, which was alluding to that the Ora Moichen, the light of the mindset, divine consciousness, going deeper and deeper into meditations, into Elokuto Yisparei, the divinity of the Most High, should also penetrate through the neck, 
down to the heart. And through this, there would be an elicitation of light which would coil a biror, a purification upon those who would come and look at this precious stone. And even for those, Shanishko Rahman Islam Bamemtat Shari Tuma, those who were sunk in the 49 levels of impurity, which by the way, which connects us to the Seder night tonight, blessed souls. The celebration of Israel as we celebrate for the 3,322nd time our emancipation from Egypt because we in fact were sunken in the 49 gates of spiritual impurity which soon shall be moved completely through the ages of our Mashiach Tzikain, our righteous Mashiach. And then therefore because Avram Avinu was constantly involved in drawing down a new divine mindset into his human emotions it had an effect on the physicality of the stone that was around his neck that those who came for him seeking advice would be healed immediately. Concluding blessed soul with this note that the reason why the nation of Israel sacrificed the Paschal Lamb is that the Egyptians in fact had worshipped the Lamb as a God. In fact, it is brought down by the Ramban, one of the classic commentators, not Ramban, but Ramban, Nachmanites, that the Egyptians had worshipped the Lamb because they worshipped the constellation of this month, which is like a Lamb Aries, I believe. And therefore, they would actually offer themselves sacrifices. They were a vegetarian society. A vegetarian society were sacrificing other wild animals to this Lamb because they thought this would get life life force, more life, more liberty as we say, to their God but they were sadly mistaken and sadly in error and the Rambam writes in Mor Nebuchim God to the perplexed that you cure the sickness or the disease with the opposite of it, so the disease of idolatry could only be cured in Egypt by the Israelites as commanded by none other than the Most High, let's make no mistake about it, it had nothing to do with the inclination to eat flesh, as some had others had in, had uh, have intimated and spoken openly in these, in, in in dialogue with myself and others and all over the the internet, but the whole idea is because of the weakness of our flesh that we brought sacrifices of flesh. No, it was to nullify a greater evil, worshiping animals, and this insane idea that somehow we are equal to animals. No. We have each one of us, whether we are the children of Israel or the nation or the Bnei Noch, the blessed children of Noch, we all have a Tzalem Elohim, a divine image. Animals do not have a divine image. They are more rooted and structured within the angelic forces of this universe. So Israel, when we came to sacrifice the Paschal Lamb, that should have incurred, that should have incurred, that should have caused the Egyptians to want to repent to the most. They unfortunately didn't. And who knows, I'm just conjecturing that if, that, if, that, if, that if Egypt had let Israel go out peacefully in those days, I would suggest to you most humbly, although I haven't written in, in the books of our, our sages, that if Egypt had let us go out in those days, they never would have been destroyed as a nation. To this day, the nation of Egypt in those days would have been uplifted through the seven on commandments and they would be working hand in hand with Israel. I want to conclude, best of souls, with two more teachings from the Rambam in his, in his seminal work, Mishnah Torah, that the sages of Israel did not yearn for the messianic era in order to have dominion over the world, to rule over the Bnei Noach, the children of Noah, to be exalted by the nations, or to eat and drink and celebrate. Rather, they desired to be free to involve themselves in Torah and wisdom without any pressures or disturbances so they would merit the world of Kam Alam Abab. This is explained the Rambam's laws of repentance. In that era, the Rambam concludes, there will be no, neither famine nor war, envy or competition, for good will flow in abundance and all delights will be as common as dust. The occupation of the whole world will be solely to know God. Therefore, Israel will be great sages in no hidden matters, attaining knowledge of their Creator to the full extent of human potential as the prophecy of Isaiah boldly proclaims to all of the creation. The world will be filled with the knowledge of God as the sea fills the ocean bed. Notice, blessed as the Rambam says, the occupation of the entire world will be solely to know God, and we of Israel will be great sages, no hidden matters. So it's a partnership, blessing souls. We will know great matters, but your sole occupation, whoever you are in the world, will be to know the Most High.